while we live in a world of inability of people to concentrate, and reliably changing online games to oblige the current generation, there is one thing that just never gets debilitating. That is board games. I guarantee that each of you has played at least one of these incredible top-selling board games, some of which have sold millions of copies and been played by billions of people worldwide. Let's check out this list of the top 10 board games of all time. Number 10. Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride has won dozens of awards, and sold over 6 million copies since its creation. It is the most popular modern board game, as it takes players on a train ride across the country while they collect cards of various types of trains, which allow them to own railway routes between different locations. The game is simple to learn but requires great strategy and tactics to win. The longer the train routes each player claims, means the more points they accumulate. There is also a selection of destination tickets, which allow players to earn bonus points. To put it basically, each turn, you draw more cards, claim a route, or get a destination ticket. Everyone can learn their geography play. There are similarly versions where you can cultivate your route all through Europe, Scandinavia, and Africa. It's an excellent, present-day game that everyone in the family can appreciate. Number 9. Clue. Pluto in certain spots, is the main admirable criminal master game that expects keeping an eye out for a dreadful lead. There is one homicide with six suspects. The game uses strategy to sort out who the executioner is, what weapon was used, and in what room the awful conduct was executed. To do this, you should progress around a mansion into every of the different rooms. Each player has been dealt with an unclear number of cards that have each suspect, weapon, and room on them. Right when you show up at a room, you are to ask concerning whether they have a particular individual, weapon, or room card, and they should show you if they have one of the three cards you have referenced. For the situation that they have none, the requesting goes on to the individual on the left side. Through the course of elimination, you can scratch off each suspect, weapon, and room ultimately attempting to crack the crime. In the event that you are incorrect, you are out of the game, and play continues with the remaining players. This is certainly a game you need to keep your poker face on for. Number 8. The Game of Life. The Game of Life is a board game from Milton Bradley, that started during the 1860s under the name, The Checkered Game of Life. The game tries to mimic the means one takes for the duration of their life, which is from school to retirement, with decisions for marriage, children, and homeownership along the way. There have been various adaptation of the game with various standard changes, with the game ending up being less savage lately. The modern version of the game was introduced in the 1960s and included squares for revenge against another player. These spaces were changed to sue for damages during the 1970s, and today, there are reward squares added, for reusing or helping the homeless. The game is easy to play, with a game board, spinner, rather than dice, cards, tokens, vehicles, pegs, and cash. After deciding between what path to take, the college path or career path, you are on your way. Spin to progress and adhere to the directions on that tile. You will have paydays, choices to buy insurance or a house, to have children, or not, and the person who leaves with the most money wins. Number 7. The Settlers of Catan. The Settlers of Catan returns players to history, to a time of trip and disclosure. Your ship has arrived on the bank of a strange area, and its name will be Catan. Along these lines, as players, you are the settlers of Catan. In spite of how it isn't the most wonderful game on earth, it is surely up there among the best. It is, obviously, another game based on exchange and economy. The game plan is to assume authority over the island of Catan, in spite of the fact that there are no battles or elimination of other players. All things being equal, the players use the island's common resources to assemble urban communities and trade with one another. Close to the completing of the game, there will be one person who has procured enough points to be considered the dominator of Catan. While the goal is to have the most points before the finish of the game, it is hard to win without trading with other players, and a piece of the time, giving up important resources. This is where the strategy comes in. Focus on what you need, and what your opponent need, then structure a procedure to guarantee fair exchange, and lastly, win. Number 6. Battleship. 
Battleship is a classic Hasbro game that requires some luck, and some technique. It is a naval-themed game requiring a player to sink the whole of their rival's warships before they get to yours. The game is played on a 10 inches by 10 inches framework, and starts with players positioning various shaped and sized ships on the grid. You will probably intentionally put your warships, to make it harder for your opponent to discover their positions. Starting there, the excitement begins. When you and your opponent take turns speculating where you figure each ship might be positioned. If you have scored a hit, your enemy yells out, and you get another turn. Exactly when a ship has been sunk, the verbalization, as promoted by Hasbro, is, you sunk my battleship. The game carries on until one player has sunk the whole of their opponent warships. The game is easy and fun, and there are endless ways to position your ships. At last there are limitless versions of online battleship games which can be played all over the world. Happy Expulsion Number 5. Risk Made in 1957 by Frenchman Albert Lamarissa, it was at first named La Conquête du Monde, which means the conquest of the world. Parker Brothers then gave the game to the US. Furthermore, retitled it to a truly engaging sounding risk. However, the point of the game is to take out your opponent and obtain control of the board's whole region. The game took off during the 1960s and was momentous among high school and college undergraduate, all through the world. Its ascent to fame was credited to its difficult nature, which kept the minds of college understudies active and locked in. Overlooking the way that luck has a little impact in the possible result of the game, strategy is the ultimate key to conquering the board. Just like Monopoly, Risk has been highlighted as one of the best games for practicing and learning skills of negotiation and strategic interaction. Number 4. Scrabble. Scrabble was a game organized by Alfred Mosher Butts, during the 1930s, in the period of America's Great Depression. Little did Butts realize that his game would be a consistently presence transformer for some, and would give smiles to families who had little left to smile about. He explored popular games like chess, bingo, and checkers for quite a long time, and gave a conclusion that word games didn't reach the same popularity as other games, because there was no score. Subsequently, Scrabble was invented. The game is basic yet requires an epic load of thinking. Players start with seven tiles, each with a letter and its relating point printed in front. After each turn, players take more tiles to recharge their hand. Each turn, the player follows a word using the tiles in their grip, and the scores are determined based on what squares the word is put on. The words, regardless, ought to be connected to at least one letters of the words that have as already been played. This adds a difficult situation to the game. Right when a player has played the total of their tiles, and there are no more extra in the pool, or once there are no more words possible to be made, players calculate the total of their scores. Players with tiles remaining, deduct the total of the point from their hand from their complete score. Your champ, has the highest number of points. Rumors have spread, far and wide, suggesting that the point framework for each letter, as created by Butts, was defined from the letter's probability to show up on the first page of the New York Times. Number 3. Stratego. Stratego is a game where two opponents use pieces of contradicting colors, commonly red and blue. Each piece has a numbered rank on one side, which is played face down to remain hidden. Right when a piece is moved to an opponent's square, the pieces are flipped, uncovering the numbers, and the piece with the smaller number is eliminated from the game. For the circumstance that the pieces are of same digits, both are taken out from the game. The ultimate objective is to take out all out of your opponent's pieces or make them to resign. Consistent with its title, this game deals with strategy. Since it was delivered, millions of copies have been purchased all around the world, particularly in the USA, Netherlands, Germany, and Belgium. In the end, just like chess, there are international and local championships coordinated consistently there are new online versions released. Certainly one board game to give you a headache. Number 2. Monopoly. Monopoly is one of the most famous family games in the world. I'm sure that practically, all of you have played it to some degree more than once, or basically have known about it. Since its creation in 1935, more than 250 million copies of the game have been purchased and played by more than 1 billion people. Being maybe the most popular board game known to man, it was legitimately drafted into the National Toy Hall of Fame in 1998. For any person who hasn't played, 
Monopoly is a real estate based board game played by up to eight players. The principal point of the game is to be monetarily stable while at the same time forcing your opponents into liquidation. Each player moves around the board buying properties and building lodgings which opponent players should pay to land on. As one player develops their empire, the rest will gradually decrease until there is only a player remaining with all the money. While chance can help you with winning or losing quicker, it is basically a round of strategy. The first game was set in London, notwithstanding, there are different versions of the game now with numerous destination and movie themes. Number 1. Chess. Chess is perhaps the oldest and most played board game ever. Played by two people on a checkered board of differentiating of color, regularly black and white, and corresponding pieces. The pieces contain a king and queen, two bishops, knights, normally portrayed as horses, and rooks, from the Persian word for a castle tower, and eight pawns. Each piece moves in specific ways around the board, and the point of the game is to corner the opponent king. The game first showed up in quite a while around the 6th century AD and immediately spread to Asia and Europe. It soon became known as a royal game, considering its popularity among the royal family. It is currently played exactly the same today as it was back then. During the 20th century, the game went through epic development, prompting international competitions, and player sponsorships. With propelling mass improvement being created, various apps have been made, allowing people to play on the internet, also accommodating global games and competitions. I'm sure, back when the game was set up, it was never imagined that it would change into the phenomenon it is today. That concludes this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Before you go, make a comment in the comment section below, what you expected in the list, or your favorite of the board games. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.